we have returned. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign. I'm the host. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm also the GM and the one responsible for making any of this tech work. It seems to be finally working. Brand new machine. This is the second campaign in this world called The Great Confusion. Chosen at a time of great confusion, and that seems to have been the motif for it so far. But thankfully, I'm joined by my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas, Silas Marsh, cultist. Hello, I am Maki, and I am playing Annie, who is a definitely not a princess, but a rogue. Hey, and I'm Nax, and I play Medric, half-orc cleric. And uh, yeah, it's been a bit of time since all of us have played. So there may be inconsistencies as all of us struggle to remember exactly what we were doing. But in general, the group had transited to a, uh, well, let's say an outpost on the edge of the known universe, uh, following a trail of the Argenti Sagex, a legendary ancient group of planeswalkers uh, looking to find... Well, to kind of find the bottom of the well in some ways and found themselves at a, uh, a way station, this, this outpost um, referred to as, does anybody remember what the, the name of it is called? I had to look it up myself. I was just kind of seeing if anybody else could jump in. The Sanctum of Resonance uh, on the edge of possibly the Far Realm. Certainly just beyond the, the edge of the known land was a void that seemed to come alive with strange dark shapes as you explored this long dead, seemingly abandoned sanctum. But as you moved through and found that there were in fact still things operating here, small mechanical spiders, for example, keeping up some maintenance, um, active rooms, one of which displayed this beautiful uh, uh, portrait of a faraway land and a, I believe it was a, a satyr um, who smirked at you and when activated the room filled with gas and was healing out into the outer courtyard and through you went to a different tower. This one with a very strange device in the very center. Uh, the um, almost the, the ghostly outline of a very small woman within whose voice you'd heard uh, reach out to you. That woman turns out to be Valenti, very much a member of the Argenti Sagex, although confined in this strange tube. As the assault rains down outside, stranger creatures start to fly in, and even ghostly apparitions moving right through the wall to face off against you, you are in the desperate challenge right now to try to uh, restore the machine to operating function, knowing nothing about it, but being able to at least figure out the puzzling stages of getting this back in operation after its apparent long, uh, uh, long dormancy and uh, long neglect. Although some of the challenges you faced seem almost like they were designed to be challenges as if they didn't want to leave simple controls for anyone to use. So far, you've tackled a number of these challenges, all the while being under attack yourselves, and indeed uh, with another creature having joined you in the room. We'll switch over to the map here just to point this out. You also have two allies with you. Uh, Dudek, uh, who is a scholar of many things, of one of them is the uh, the interest in the Argenti Sagex, although his knowledge of them is relatively limited. Uh, he has been helping along with you. And Gosh, the strange one-eyed creature who is in fact a servant of a, uh, a beholder with a bow tie, uh, one uh, Tauzek Riva, who you met along the way, here to ostensibly help you out also to maybe keep tabs on you and anything you might find that Tauzek might also find interesting. However, all of you are somewhat wounded and, and under the spirits. There remain three spots which seem to be disconnected from the activity. Now, in the previous session, I had put the onus on you guys to create the puzzles. That seemed a bit unfair. So I've, in fact, gone ahead and created puzzles 
sorry, created um, complicated controls which need to be puzzled through for you guys to engage with for the final three. Um, as a reminder, um, you can engage with these uh, these puzzles. Sometimes they do take multiple people or multiple times to, to complete. Um, sometimes they are dangerous as massive arcs of arcane energy swirl about as machinery starts to turn and twist and uh, get into rapid and uh, vehement motion. You're also under attack as there is indeed not only things outside, but also in, in the area, the core area right now, there is indeed a ghostly specter which has been, uh, which has moved straight through the walls and is there to apparently attack. It can be attacked physically, you do know this, but it also seems to touch the very soul when it attacks, making it a very dangerous creature indeed. Now, I'm pretty sure that we were careful to make the, uh, the initiative, uh, make it back to the top of the initiative, uh, which in fact does cause, if I get it right here somewhere, another round outside. I don't have my great notes on that. So for the moment, it's going to be somewhat silent. Perhaps they found more trouble with the walking automaton outside, moving its slow but steady way to try to defend things. Three spots remain in the, uh, in the challenges, either the top and bottom according to the map or in the middle in fact. I'll give you some description so you have some idea what's there, but Silas will be the first to try to tackle this. Uh, I'll start with the center one, which has become more and more active. This is out of which the the bolts of arcane energy are sparking and spitting. It has begun spinning up. Inside, you can see through the cracked and open case a series of what look like cylinders of metal and stone in, engraved with something you can't tell because they're turning too quickly. But they seem to be misaligned, and it seems as though those will need to be aligned properly to transfer the energy from one side to another. Uh, Just for me to remember, Mark, I believe part of what we were doing was they're dealing with the puzzles. Then I was running in and basically doing like the resulting note on the console in the other room, correct? I think there was something like that where there would be a, yeah, a, a, a small light yeah. would be illuminated and a switch could be hit to to attach it back to the center point. That seems reasonably correct. Yeah, I think that's how you were assisting. Yeah. Right, and also you were assisting. Plus there's also, you know, things to dodge and things yeah. to attack as well. So that's, that's the description of that center point. It seems dangerous. You might have to reach in and try to align those things, but they are moving and there is lightning moving everywhere around them. The upper... Um, pod. Uh, and each of these are essentially some sort of pod, although one of the pods is actually missing. Um, you see that there's sparks around the bottom of the pod. And it looks as though there's some sort of connector which is meant to to be solid to the, the bottom of the pod, like a cup on the bottom. There's a bit of a spark gap there. It's on a strange looking lever that levers back to uh, just under it. Someone can crawl in and potentially look a little closer there are a number of what look like round shapes with hooks on them that seem to be lying on the floor beneath it. And finally, to the south, in the south window, someone would have glanced in. Uh, and it has what looks like a control panel. In fact, I will share with everyone uh, what that looks like. I can figure out how to share. There we go. You should see a, uh, a block right now. Looks like a block of three square spaces, symbols in each space, and then an open space. And just below the bottom of the pod, 
you see a number of um, blocks. And I'll share that one as well. Each one of which could fit into that last space. Now, you can spend some time trying to interpret those. You can. Can you put up the previous drawing again, just so I can copy it down? Uh, yeah, you should see that. It, if you go to roll 20. It is still there. The you new one, move the top one sits over top of the yeah. old ones. You if, just have to move it. If you go to your roll 20 as well and look under oh. the uh, the third or the journal tab, you should see two listed there. One listed as arcane message, and the other one is runes. It popped up on our screen, but if it, they popped up one on top of the other, so if you move the runes, the, the message okay. is button. Yeah, oh. that too. Right. But if you need to refer to them in the future, they should be both in the journal there, so you don't have to copy them down necessarily. So with those present in front of you, and with a small reprieve from the constant blasting that's been going on around the room, and i got to double check to make sure if my specters... Yes, they have their own initiative. So we turn to Silas to begin. Okay. So if I understand it right, the middle one has a bunch of misaligned... Cylinders. Uh, cylinders. The top one has a bunch of stuff on the bottom that needs to be connected, maybe. And then the bottom one has the... Uh, we have to figure out which of the icons goes into the last thing. Yep, that's a good summary. Okay. Well. I should mention, too, that within the cylinder uh, itself, where the ghostly image of the small woman sits, uh, one of these specters has moved into the cylinder, and it is looking very murky inside. What that means exactly, or what threat that proposes, you're not sure, but it probably does pose some kind. But for uh, the device, like the, where the question mark is, only one one of the blocks can go in there, or can multiple blocks? It seems to be no, only one. It seems to be an open space just big enough for one of those blocks. Okay. Hey. Um. Well, and Silas mind, is going to look at the the one at the top of the map. Okay, keeping in mind that Dudek or Gosh can help you, um, it would wait till their turn to help you, but then you would be able to roll with advantage if depending on what the help is. You can also ask them to do things on their own, but the PCs are more qualified and more active. Um, Silas is going to ask Dudek to look at the southernmost one. He's probably most familiar with iconography but uh so the northernmost one there's a number of hooked wires so when you look closer at it beneath the pod there is what looks to be some sort of receptacle um, basically a, a small metal knob on the bottom below that by about six inches is what looks like a metallic cup extended on a long rod that seems balanced, not at its end, but is actually balanced somewhere in the middle, deeper in. And below the, the, uh, um, the whole thing and kind of the, the dirt below, you see uh, four, let me see, no, sorry, three, um, what look almost like, uh, like weights. You would have, you would have seen, um, weights at uh, any uh, any sort of uh, uh, assayist or even yeah. the, the minor. They look like weights with uh, the, that are, are discs with hooks on the top and bottom. I got it. Um, so the, does you said there's a cup is the bar hanging like right out of the bottom of it or is it suspended underneath so the the bar is horizontal suspended okay. on a pivot that hangs below the uh the whole thing basically pivot in the yeah. wall and so to the cup is is distant from that you can see the spark between it as energy is trying to flow but um while it's strong energy it still can't make that gap 
then your the hair on your skin. I think you still have hair. Actually, I'm not sure if you have hair. Not a lot. But your mm-hmm. your uh, your skin very much would feel the sort of the sort of sympathetic uh, electrical or or lightning or force energy that's going on through this. Okay, so this looks like a balance problem. Uh, uh, there were three weights. That's correct. Okay. They do appear to be of different sizes. Yep. Um. Hmm. Well, Silas is going to try and figure out how to make him balance on the thing. Okay. Um, He's not can... sure exactly what that'll do, but... Uh... What what kind of things is Silas trying to do at first? Just hanging a random assortment, or trying to determine how heavy these things are, or what? Well... Or just holding the thing up yourself. It seems like you could do that. He will actually try that first to see if there's anything that triggers if he... So that he can figure out what angle to hold it in. So, just kind of swing it up and down a bit. Okay. It seems to move very easily, um, but it's definitely um, got some weight to it on the other end of the pole, um, which is not exactly balanced at the moment, but it is it is kind of moving a little bit easier. The closer you move to the actual nub at the top, um, make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. You're able to let go quickly enough as you can feel and sense the energy build up, and there's a massive spark that lights up. When the spark hits, it kind of uh, goes through the entirety of the cup, and you still feel, you take you take one point of lightning damage uh, as there's a little, scar, a little spark even when you let go. But you feel like you wouldn't, if you held on to it, It'd be very painful if you had some sort of padding, maybe, or if you were able to mitigate that. But you're not sure if it would hold because it doesn't seem to have any actual grip or suction uh, between the cup and the ball. So if you moved it, you'd have to hold it. Or, hmm. Well, he's going to see if he can balance the weights in a way that it will hold it there. Okay. What balance? What weights are you using? Unless you take a closer he look at the He starts with one move. and moves to all three. It's okay. probably going to take all three, but we'll see. Um, how about for this round then? I'll have you make a a perception roll or something similar to determine if you can how heavy the weights are. Sure. Yeah, no problem. 19. You pick up the weights. Two of them seem roughly the same weight. One's a little bit heavier than the other. Uh, and then the third weight is much heavier. In fact, as heavy as the other two. Um, you're not exactly sure what unit they might have been using. Um, but And if you have anything you can weigh it against, that would help. But right mm-hmm. now, you're, you essentially know that the two small ones are the equivalent weight of the, of the large one. But the two small ones are not quite the same weight. Now, are there <clears throat> like loops to hang the hooks? from i hook things from or do they just sit on the when you look a little closer you can see that there's actually a hook underneath the cup and there's a hook at the other end of the pole okay um well whichever angle it looks like it's supposed to be at he'll put the a heavier one on that end and a lighter one on the other end and he'll just keep trying them until something Gets the right angle, presumably. Okay, so you're taking the heaviest one at one end and the lightest one at the at which which end is the heaviest one, the cup or the uh, the pole? Whichever end it has to be to get that angle that almost shocked them. <clears throat> um, it really has to be all the way up, so it's basically as much as much weight, but not too much. Um, I'll go ahead and say that when you when you kind of work it out, you can use these numbers. The smallest one is two units. The medium one is three units of weight. And the heaviest one is five units of weight. And there is a hook mm-hmm. on the bottom of these weights as well, so they can be suspended together. 
So um, am I trying to make the rod go vertical or? It, it, you're, it looks as though you're trying to make the rod balance. Yeah, but I don't know what you mean by balance. Right now, am it's I balancing an angle? it horizontally? Yes. Or... Yes. So, it, it looks as though if it has too much pressure, it will not stay up. If it has too little pressure, it will not stay up. And there are only two places to hook these on. That's correct. Okay. Well, he'll just spend his time. He'll start with one pair, go to another pair, just going through the combinations. Okay. Um, for the first combination, tell me which ones you're using. Mm, this has probably been longer than a round, so you might want to go to the others, and okay. I'll... Uh, yep, you can work it out, and basically you've spent order. your time examining the puzzle and looking through it and seeing what's going on. Uh, moving on to the Shadow Horrors, which are, I think, all outside at the moment. Uh, just assaulting that guy. So, just have a real quick. I figure out which ones by are in order. A real quick uh, bite, and then a claw. Well, actually, it's tough enough. So it, the 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 large mass of roughly humanoid with wings shaped creature that's been outside screeching and, and flying back and forth makes an assault down toward the the massive um, armored construct that's been moving around outside, and is unable to scratch beneath its armor. It seems to be holding its own for the moment. Uh, Parent. Uh, Valenti is doing whatever Valenti is doing. Gosh, given no particular orders, is going to try to defend himself against the thing which is in front of him. Gosh has a skull and crossbones on him. Is he like dead or poisoned or something? Oh, that's a really good point. I thought he was dead, but he's not at zero hit points, so I don't know. I think I, I tossed him a hill. Maybe he's uh he has he's got a condition like don't those things like lower his permanent, lower his max HP, but permanently or something? Or, I, or if he was dead, it would be a big red X. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I do not remember. I do not remember. So I will for ease. Huh. That's a good question. And now I'm struggling to try to get rid of that. <laughs> we'll assume that he's still active for the moment. I think you did end up healing him a little bit. Uh, and yeah, the big red X would be if he was dead. This is probably meant to indicate he was down, um, but not actually dead yet because he hadn't rolled uh, saving throws. Um, and actually, Gosh will, will kind of raise his hands up I think this is more effective. Oh, well, we'll see. He doesn't know. Uh, okay, well, it, he would know that these things are probably not effective. So he will, he will just try to claw at them um, desperately. Uh, a 23 to hit and a 22 to hit. Jeez. Are you seeing the rolls? I guess they're they're in the general chat. Um, uh, I'm the the rolls that you just did. I am not. The last thing I see is Pat's perception check. Just make yep. sure that I'm not whispering. Ah, here we go. Uh, there. Just as a test, this doesn't count, but you should see that one. Yeah. Okay. I was on mute, but I I did not see them until this. Nope, that's fair. That was my mistake. Um, but uh, he does strike it twice. However, with its somewhat insubstantial uh, nature, uh, it does not do a lot of damage to them. Um, 
it does help. It does. It is effective. But um, you see his hand passing nearly through it and kind of shredding the image a little bit. Um, there's almost a sense, too, that uh, while they have a humanoid form, that humanoid form is more of a projection of their mental being than actually their shape, such that when he cuts through them with his claws, it kind of streaks a little bit and stays that way until it slowly molds back. But he was successful in, in trying to prevent at least a moment's damage. Annie, what would you like to do? I have one of these in front of me. I'm going to stab it with vice. If I can find vice, there she is. That is the one that is within the tube with Valenti. Oh, this one is? I think so, yes. I thought it was this one. Oh, no, you're right. There are two there. Yep, fair enough. It's kind of half through the console as well. It's all good. But there is... A... I don't know what this thing is trying to do, but... 20 is definitely a hit. Uh... Now, I don't think you have the sneak attack damage... I don't think so either. So it would just be uh, seven piercing damage. Um, and if it's injured already, plus it, four, I don't know. It is not injured yet. Well, now it is. However, unlike when um, Gosh struck the other one, you see that there is a clear tear where um, Vice has cut through it. Cool, cool. Um, I will then, um, I am trying to remember how to character. <laughs> it's been, been playing too no much worries. Baldur's Gate. <laughs> um, yeah, I heard Baldur's Gate is free and amazing. I don't have it yet. I'm trying so not to because I want to have at least some time for I'm not getting it before Halcon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was there anything else that Annie needed to do? I'm just checking if there's if what I can do for bonus actions. Um, no. Actually, yes. I will give Gosh advantage on his next attack to the, the dude in front of him. Actually, okay. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Okay. What sort of advantage uh, are, are you able to yell out? Don't don't let it grab you. Just keep swinging. I don't know. All right, just keep swinging. It's the the classic uh, uh, signs advice. Worked well for that movie. Let's hope it works well for for Gosh. Different kind of supernatural threat. All right, it is Dudek's chance to jump in, and Dudek, as requested, is going to go over and take a closer look at the one at the bottom, <clears throat> and. Uh, he is going to try to... Actually, he pulls out a book uh, and starts to, to take notes and do scribbles. Uh, let's see if he can uh, interpret them. So that was a... Okay. Uh, where is Dudek? Hello, Dudek. You're pretty good at all this arcane stuff. All right. That's did it roll? Rolled twice. That's weird. Um, well, either one is pretty bad. I'm going to have to look this up. I don't know these ones right off, but they do seem familiar. And that's his turn spent gazing through his book, making scribbling notes. Um, because he spent an action to do it, he will be able to tell you what the runes are next round. At least you think that's probably what he's going to be able to do. Medrick, you're up. Uh, I see uh, there's a specter thing hitting Gosh, and Gosh is useful. He can translate things. So I'm going to, or the spiritual weapon is going to go at. Where the hell is my roll 20? Okay. I'm just going to move the turn order window because it's on top of my character and now I can't see shit. Okay. So the spiritual weapon is going to attack the 
Specter next to Gush. Okay. Spell attack modifier. It's a 21 to hit. 21 definitely hits. Do I forget everything? Yes. Eh, it just takes us a little while. Yeah, I'm pretty sure spiritual weapon is 1d8 plus modifier, right? Yes. Okay. And by modifier, it's by wisdom score. Yes. So plus three. Okay. Your yeah, your spell casting. It takes seven damage. Seven damage. All right. Quite a substantial strike as the as the burning hammer flies through it. Uh, tattering it somewhat. You see some parts of it even kind of fall away and then in little orange bluish wisps sort of melt away. It seems much diminished from that strike. Still and then I will hit it with a hammer. All right. And remind me which hammer this is. It's been a while. Uh, it's just a warhammer. So I'm pretty sure it's also 1d8 worth of damage, but yeah, fuck. it's the same as the spell attack modifier, right? Or... No, it'd be your... 1d8 your... plus strength. Yeah. Strength. Well, I... No, I mean, after the further two hit. Can you tell I haven't played d in like three months? Okay. So... Where the hell is... My... Okay, so... so... Okay, so it's also plus seven. 18 to hit. Uh, 18 is a strike. Wow, it's like the opposite of my rolls last time. <laughs> Ten damage. Um, and as it strikes, you see that um, similar to his claws, uh, there is a diminished effect, as though it is able to kind of move around these solid objects of non-magical origin. However, it did you did strike it, and it is yeah. tattered, and its form is slowly no longer looking like a humanoid form. Uh, if anything, it kind of resembles more the classical ghost. Disperse. Uh, and is that your turn? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any more like bonus actions. Well, my bonus action was a spiritual weapon. So. Yeah. Uh, well, now they get to go. So the first of all, the one that was just struck by you um, forms spindly arms with um, ending in three-fingered hands or claws and dives at you, trying to strike. Uh, let's see. Twenty. Uh, oh, it must be automatically rolling advantage or something. Uh, 13 to hit, I don't think hits. Nope. Okay, let's just see if I have... Uh, type of roll, normal roll. I don't know. It's probably just a double click. So, it does swish by you, but unfortunately does not connect. Well, unfortunate for uh, it. Um, it's not that intelligent, so it has only the rage. The other one will do the same against the one wielding the little, little bright dagger and try to strike at Annie. Stabby stab. Um, that's weird. That's really weird. Is it 13 the first time every time? No. Okay. It just seems mm -hmm. that way. But a 13 is a miss, I'm assuming. It is. Um, this one is much more substantial and has almost, at, actually from where you're sitting, standing, <clears throat> you can see features of what was once, it looks like an, a half-orc, maybe? Okay. And I think that's all the ones that are active. To the top of the round, uh, they are going to try, let's see here, where are you? Do, 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 there we are. And... So, Roll a d6. Uh, okay, it does not have that back again. Oh, that's the wrong one anyway. That's the one I wanted. Does it have it back? It does not. Uh, so... It is just going to lash out again. 
Uh, it happens to be that same roll there, so I'll do that one. That's a s yeah, that's six. It's throwing me off that it's double double rolling. But in the courtyard, you see once more um, sort of black tendrils strike out, but don't seem to find purchase. Uh, Silas, you've had a chance to work on the weights, kind of weighing them back and forth, trying to figure out what to be added where. Mm -hmm. What are you going to well, try? There's normally 11 possible combinations, but since I know which side is, it's supposed to be like angled up slightly, uh, that only requires six combinations. Uh, so he's just going to start going through them. Uh, five on one end, three on the other end. Okay. It's only going to be one combination per action unless you have a specific one. Well, it, it, with each specific one. Sure. Uh, so you put five where? Front or back? By the cup or by the end? Which one is supposed to be higher up? Um, it looks like the cup should be slightly higher. Okay, then the five goes at the other end. Okay. Uh, and the, and you said the three at the front? Yep. Okay. Uh, you hang those down. Um, when you hang the five, the thing clatters to the very top, and you can see as it clatters really close, it then pushes back as though it, it's too close. When you hang the three, uh, it does not seem to hold it quite in the right space. Uh, please okay. make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Sorry, a con uh, constitution saving throw. If it's magic, it's an 11. Otherwise, it's a 2. Unfortunately, neither is enough. Um, as the lightning sparks out for 9 points of lightning damage, and you see the thing actually violently kind of... It hovers there for a second... But then it's almost as though the whole thing uh, uh, builds up to a certain point and then just shocks outward, knocking both the weights off and then resetting it. Okay. Um, that was your that was basically your action for that round. You can if you have a bonus action that's ready or not, uh, or we can start with another one next time. Uh, I don't have the list of stuff that I had. On me, uh, but I uh, will say make a perception check. Seven. Seven. Um, it moved very strangely. It didn't move in the way you would have expected the heaviest and the lightest one to move, as if there's some additional weight somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't remember if I've got any spell slots left, so I'll just, uh, that'll be it. Okay. The creature outside will once more take a strike there and put out a call. Doesn't have that anymore, so it's just going to be a simple strike. Ooh, but that will hit it. That will hit it, and it will hit it hard. As there is a psychic scream that goes on from outside as the creature scratches in and finally hooks onto that armor. Uh, however, it does not seem to be bothered by the psychic scream as the construct does not seem to be affected by psychic damage. Um, that's the only one of those. Valenti is doing battle and we'll actually uh, have to do it manually okay mm, nothing happening with Valentia this turn um, Gosh is going to try to use um, the thing you've told it keep, keep slashing well yeah yeah, that's right. You just told him keep slashing, so he'll keep slashing. Uh, but he will keep slashing the first slash with advantage. That is an 18 to hit. That is enough. And, <laughs> and even at half damage, 
he does succeed, and you see him kind of go wild for a second, as if tapping Ooh. into a more primal version of himself, diving forward and kind of reaching out with his claws and just shredding in all directions. And in fact, the creature does dissipate uh, after Gosh has been successful. And you hear a little bit, no, you don't hear a little bit in your head, actually. <laughs> you specifically do not. Uh, but you see the eye kind of look over at you, and then there's a slow blink in thank you. Um, Annie, you're up, facing off against one of these things. Actually, sorry, it will also move, because it can now, uh, to stand beside you as an ally. Oh, yay. And now it is... Yay, snack attack. Snurk attack. I'm going to... Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not quite enough to make contact with it. Uh, actually, wait, I... sorry. Uh, no, that is just enough. Armor class 12. Um, so you're a little uncertain, maybe because... Uh, maybe you still don't quite trust gosh, or maybe this whole thing is somewhat outside of your, your realm, but you still nonetheless are able to connect. And uh, so, so that would be the 31 minus four. Um, it is injured, but it's not below half. Uh, so, so it's, if I'm below half, Oh, right. It takes Sorry. extra damage. Right. If it, it's missing any hit points, it gets extra damage. If I'm below half, it gets extra damage on top of that. Okay. So 31 minus 4. Yeah. Uh, as you strike into it and quite satisfyingly are able to slice upward, cleaving the form in two, uh, and then it kind of, both halves seem to try to grab onto the other half to try to pull itself back together, but it succeeds only in kind of pushing force outward and inward at the same time and tearing itself into small bits. Congratulations, Annie. You have technically Ooh. kind of dispatched both of them in a way. Technically, technically. You know, with the with the advice given. Uh, um. What would you like to do? You I'm going to ask Valen yep. Valencia what I can do to help to help her. Okay. Um. You hear this sort of disembodied voice because it doesn't come directly from the tube it comes from other where other places in the room and the, mm -hmm. the the voice is somewhat distracted as you might imagine mm -hmm. um move quicker i cannot take this out of here and it hurts okay um i am going to did we all hear this or only any it would have been everybody heard that. Okay. Because it's from the speakers that are in the floor, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pop into the door here and ask if they, they're any closer to figuring out another one so I can put it and put it. And then wait for one to be able to be input. Okay. You hear a doodak call back. I, I, think, I think I figured out what the words are, at least most of them. Uh, and in fact, he starts calling them out. And what I will do is I'll actually show you, um, first of all, the literal translation of the message itself as he interprets it. The upper symbol seeming to be alchemy, the bottom symbol seeming to be metamorphosis, the upper seeming to be travel with an emphasis on planar travel, and the bottom seeming to be seeming to be sacrifice and magic. Now remember, you can look up these at any point in time. Um, he would just call out those words and and the associations. Uh, and then, oh, there they are. And then, as for the runes. I think I figured those out as well. And I will show you another one, which is uh, basically the, the the runes page, but this time 
a translation literally of each of those. Uh, and they translate as evolve, mutate, transfigure, transmutate, transit, and transmogrify. I just had lag in my own throat where the syllable took an extra second to come out. So he would call those out, which means each of you can kind of suggest one of those that might be suggested, might be uh, more uh, accurate, or you can study the problem yourself and see if you can eliminate some from the equation. And that is Dudek's turn. As he kind of says, I don't know which one will be correct. It'll take me some time to figure that out. Which I will have him roll this time again to see if he can figure out the association. Still an Arcana roll. And this time got a Are you seeing one roll or two? I'm seeing two. Well, there's a 12 two. and a 10. Okay, you are seeing both those. I don't know if it's just I'm clicking too heavily or what, but the 12 is still not enough to really make any headway this round, so maybe in another round he'll have some idea of what to do next. Or if any of you have ideas, then you can certainly do that. But that is Dudek's turn. Medric, you're up. All right. So there's one specter that's in the tube with a uh, Valindy? Looks like it, yes. <laughs> I'm just wondering if I have any spells that can be useful to target the specter, but not Valindy. I'm sure she would prefer that. So if I tried to sigger, actually, he's inside crystal, so it would have to be something that could move through without breaking it. Yeah, you mm. can make out the shape on the inside, so it's technically targetable, but it would have to be something that does not, um, or that can move through. Basically, anything you can cast through a window without breaking the window. So glory of midday, if it's radiant damage, that would work. Uh, yes. Although, is that discriminatory? I believe so. Just let me look up the actual description. Yeah. Because I know it's like unfriendly creatures that are that get targeted. I think we remember something about that. It's been a few months since I've used it. So. Yeah, worth checking on it. Um, is that that is the the channel divinity? It's the channel divinity. Okay, yeah, that's right. I was trying to remember. Any magical darkness within 30 feet of me is dispelled. Each hostile creature within 30 feet must make a con save. Takes radiant damage or fire damage equal to 2d6 plus my cleric level on a failed saving throw. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like hostiles only. Yes. And I think you don't consider Valenti to be hostile. Nope. She's <laughs> been helpful. <laughs> um, and I, I don't consider Gosh to be hostile either. Uh, and... From where you are there, you'll also and get what that level am I? In as well. So it's going to be 3d6 because I'm level... What level am I? 10? I'm above level 7. Nice. Below level 12. So there's a save involved first? Yep. The save is a con, a con save. Con save? It's my okay. cleric level. All right, don't think there's anything special I'm just there. trying to figure out which level I am. Well, first of all, the, the creature with, within the tube with Valenti gets a 7, which is not enough. And then outside... Am I level, are we level 10? Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. Never mind. Correct. Yes, we are level 10. So, plus 10. And then the creature outside... Ooh. Creature outside rolls a 17. Is that a save? Uh, 17 is... Okay. Yeah, 17 is a save. My spell DC is 15. Okay. And is it half on save or nothing yep. on save? Okay. Half on save. Well, first of all, the one that's in there with her does not save. Bye. And somehow survives 
Oh, shit. But you can now only pick out a small wisp of it still remaining within. As though most of its its body was... Uh, was blown away. As the light crests outward, briefly illuminating the entirety of the, or half of the outer court as well, you see this wave pass over that, uh, that creature that's out there, the one that's humanoid with wings, the shadow, which has been picking away at this, uh, this massive automaton. Mm -hmm. And you see with satisfaction as like sand being blown by a massive wind, its form is simply dissipated and destroyed. Nice. Uh, as it, it too is also. And you kind of sense that, you know, you have a lot of power there, but it seemed to be especially unhappy about the power you just wielded, as though vulnerable to it. Let there be light. And indeed, there is light. And fire. I think. Uh, those guys are not there. Okay. And that is, in fact, all the visible enemies for the moment. And as my bonus action, I'm just going to move the uh, spiritual weapon. Can I put it in the same spot as Annie? Uh, it can occupy the same space. It can? Okay. No, it cannot. It can move okay. through an ally space, but it cannot occupy that space. I'll put it like next to me here, but it's like right against the wall. Okay. All right, so hopefully I at least like drew aggro for a moment, so... <laughs> Uh, indeed, no specters remain visible. Uh, back to the top of the round. And let's see here. Where are you? That's that one. And that's not visible again. So it will take a different action again. As you see the entirety of the outer darkness, the one just beyond the ridge here, kind of ripple and shake, uh, and you see a creature forming in it. Uh, it actually is this one. It wasn't supposed to be on the visible yet. But kind of on that boundary of shadow, you see once more one of these creatures being created, I guess you might say, but it does not seem to be fully formed yet. I'm sorry, that would be... Over here in the darkness. So on the edge of that space. But for the moment, it seems no enemies attack. You have a breather. Problems to solve, but a breather nonetheless. Silas, you're up. Oops. Okay, so it looked... When I put the last two down, the heavy one wasn't quite... I, the heavier one, even with the one on the other end, wasn't high. It wasn't heavy enough to push it all the way up. Like it was pushed back a little bit. It seems almost as if it was too heavy, and it got pushed too deep. And then there was a reaction from the the socket itself. Uh, okay. Uh, well, then I'll try three and two. Okay, where is the three and where's the two? Uh, it's all, The heaviest one always goes on the same side. Okay. Whatever side was pushing it up. Okay. Um, as you hang these, it teeters back and forth a couple of times until finally drifting upward and then drifting and pressing once more too deep into the socket. Uh, it seems a closer solution, but not quite the right one. Uh, Constitution saving throw, please. And if you want to make rolls to notice things or to interpret things, that would Eight. also be part of this. Okay. Unfortunately, not quite able to withstand the spark. Um, as you take another additional eight lightning damage. And once, hey. once more, you can make a perception check, or if you have a better skill you'd rather use that would make more sense in interpreting the solution, or interpreting not the really. Uh, well, yeah, no, if it's not a magical thing, then it wouldn't be arcana, so this perception would be it. Seven. 
once again, it's, it's hard to figure out. Um, when you look at it, uh, 3 plus 2 equals 5. That should balance, but it did not because there seems to be too much weight at the other end. Uh, moving through, this one is not yet formed. Valente seems much, much more at peace. Her form and her shape seem to solidify once more. And through the speakers, there is an audible sigh of relief. Thank you. It was making things difficult. Still, I can sense the thing on the threshold. It lurks. It waits. It will come again. The sooner we can reset this, the more I can move on. Um, that's Valenti's turn. Gosh is going to move over to the door and kind of peer outward on watch to see as if they might be able to give you some warning. Annie, what would you like to do? Um, <clears throat> so Judek is figuring out that puzzle. I'm going to, oh. Ah. There's, a, there's a threshold right there if you. There's a door, keep opening and closing the door. That's what I'm going to do. I'm oh, just going okay. <laughs> to... It wasn't that. I was, I was clicking the door, so I was closing the door. Oh, so it was yeah, blinding. yeah. I couldn't see the door symbol myself, so I figured I'd move the eye yeah. to Um, I'm going to uh, take, take a look over Dudek's shoulder and... Uh, get the symbols. I'm like, when you figure it out, yeah, yell and I'll, I'll press the right buttons, basically. Okay. Is that an aid action or are you holding your action for when he's figured it out? I'm going to hold my action to input what he's, what he tells me to input. Okay. All right. He's up next. Uh, let's see. He takes a look at those, <laughs> um, those translated runes, Oops, which I will just bring up to. I mean, give me two two seconds. I actually want to check something. Okay. Um... Actually, he won't bring up that one. Never mind. All right. Master of Tactics spe specifically is to aid with an attack. Okay. Well, it's attacking a problem, but I'm not going to stretch the thing quite that far. Um, he's written down in his book, I think this is what they mean by these symbols. And in fact, um, transforming just the raw symbols from alchemy, metamorphosis, planar travel, sacrifice, magic. This is what he believes it is asking or stating. In the alchemy of metamorphosis, where planar travel meets sacrifice and magic, the true power to something is wrought. So, at least the problem seems a little clearer. I'm still not sure which one of these might be the actual answer. Any one of them could be. And Dudek has not been doing so great on his Arcana rolls, but he can try to do it again. He reminds me of Zacchaeus' Arcana rolls. It's one of those things where it's sort of... Well, that's a 14. Still not really all that great. Um, well, I remember, Silas is going to shout out Evolve. Okay. Dudek isn't certain. Silas has said Evolve. Does that trigger Annie's uh, attempt? Give me two seconds on... I just want to... Me, the player, remember what words mean. <laughs> Sounds fair. Remembering what words mean is kind of key to all this language. Especially when you know three different languages. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> what is that? Okay. I don't think evolve is right. 
necessarily. They're they're all almost synonyms. It's like there's some mean guy who picked out some words that mm. felt like they'd be challenging. <laughs> um, so does that not trigger? Does Annie second guess Silas's suggestion? Can I make a roll? Sure. What kind of roll would you like to make? A wisdom roll to see, because evolve would be more gradual compared to the other ones, which seem to be much more instantaneous. Let's call it an insight roll. Okay. Uh, helps if I can remember how roll 20 works. There we go. Insight. Okay, 12. twelve. Um, your 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 instinct feels right, and then it's not evolving. Usually, involve is a longer term process, but they could be talking about how long this process actually takes. So it's an uncertain, ambiguous response. I'll say, wouldn't that be a longer process though? And I'll wait until. I won't trigger it. Okay. So some question remains before the floor. Medric, would you like to try? Well, Medric is not that great at puzzles. Um. See, Annie spent a lot of time with books. Okay. <laughs> is there still a specter in, in the in the cylinder? Uh, no, that one has been dealt with. Sorry, okay. Because there's still one this. that's on the map. Yeah, I should have moved that one to X. Okay. Uh, which one of these sounds the most like fire between evolve, mutate, transfigure, transmutate, transit, and transmogrify? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Ignis, which of these sets you on fire? Dear Ignis, <laughs> WWID. <laughs> There is still additional one additional puzzle there as well. Mm -hmm. It's a more of a physical problem. That's the aligning of cylinders that are moving quickly within the middle of that part. Right. Is there like a visual representation of that by any chance? Unfortunately, I don't have one. I didn't get a chance to put that together. And then for some reason, I, I had the puzzle. That's more something that Annie could do. It's it. It would require some dexterity, speed, and not getting your fingers mangled. You think that could yeah, be very sure. dangerous? I, I... I can do that if, if that's the, the case on on my next turn. Right, and too many windows or too many tabs. <laughs> I, keep, I have like all these things open for me for the puzzles that I'm getting lost between puzzle pieces. I know this pain. I have <laughs> four windows and 12 tabs open. Um, what would you like? Uh, for to... now, I will. So who's up next in the turn order? Silas. I will give Silas guidance. Okay. For his next turn. You got this. <laughs> and I'll gradually move the spiritual oven. One, two, three, got damn it. Next to Gosh. To just in case any more things like come from outside. Okay. You can't see them from where you are, so it's kind of fighting blind if there's something outside, but nothing it seems from in the direct vision that you can see. Okay. I, I can see the hammer, but not the monsters. Right, right. So the hammer's pretty much just like a guard hammer. Yep, kind of... <laughs> Gosh looks over at it and kind of nods at the hammer as if it is a being, and then kind of looks... It has that has that double take of the eyes going a the eye going a little bit wider... And then it kind of narrows in that sort of, oh, it's not a person. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Back around to the top. Uh, let's see. First of all. Ig oh. Silas, Ignis blesses you to figure this out. Uh, okay. Um, outside, as the wall... Uh, 
uh, starts to form this creature out of it, the entirety of the wall seems to burst forward, um, engulfing, let's see, what is the range here? Uh, yep, all that stuff, and that as well. Uh, engulfing the entire courtyard and actually through the open doors as well uh, with um, long streaks of that lightning shadow that were there before. Um, I will have Gosh make a saving throw. Unfortunately, the first one is a 12. Uh, and this thing is not as dexterous. That is, that is also a 12. 12s and 13s today. That's that's a lot of my NPC rolls. Uh, unfortunately, as both of them are just pounded by this uh, lashing necrotic shadow. Oof. All right. Uh, have I been taking it for the wrong one? Oh, doesn't matter. Uh, and unfortunately, um, you see it strike no, uh, Gosh, and he is engulfed briefly by the shadowy tendrils and then falls as he is down. No. No. Perhaps more distressingly, you see the uh, armor outside be taken apart piece by piece as the lightning goes through and around it and shreds it. Damn. No. Um, uh, Silas, hurry up. You are up, Silas. Working on it. Um, well, if 5, 3, and 3, 2 are both too heavy... I'll try balancing them. I put three and two on one side and five on the other. Okay. You had three and two on the cup in last time. You want to reverse that then? And put the heavy one no. on the cup side? No, it's a three weight and a two weight on one side and a five weight on the other. It would be even. That's what you did last time. You had the No, two I had a five... I had the the first time I had the five weight on one end and the three weight on the other. Second time I had the three weight on one end and the two weight on the other. Oh, apologies. Um, it still wasn't the correct solution, but it was it was not what I thought it was. Um, in fact, I'll probably I'll write these in uh, two and five and three and two. And this time you're doing. Sorry, repeat it once more. Uh, it would be, they'll be balanced. It would be three plus two on one side, which is five, and then five on the other side. And which side is the three plus two, and which side is the five on? Um, numerically, it shouldn't make a difference, but we'll put three plus two on the cup side. Okay. I don't know. Uh, it begins to once more kind of move back and forth. Um, but very quickly it becomes apparent that the end, the far end away from the cup still seems to be too heavy and it's jamming the cup onto the, the, the button, which goes too far, activates its repulsive response, and once more lightning bursts forth. Now, because you've experienced this twice, I'll give you advantage on the con save because you're aware of what the consequences are now. I don't think it's going to make a difference because I've only got two hit points. Well, it's a natural 20. If it still does half damage, it, pr it uh, probably takes me out still. It'll be quarter damage. But that still could potentially take you out. Quarter damage is... Two points. Two I'm points. Out. So you see um, Silas trying with this, and then probably some expletive is said as it once more bursts in his face. And then he crumples to the ground. Oh, shit. I didn't realize you were, like, so, such at low HP when I had my hearing. Otherwise, I would have healed you. <laughs> mm. um, Powers of observation, zero. 
and well, that's fine i don't think you can see my hit points um yeah i don't think you can see each other's but you can always mention hey i'm almost dead uh as now the uh creature newly birthed from outside um comes flying in in fact will dive fly through the body of of uh, gosh or over it to end up in front of Medric. However, it just, sped the, quickly to get there, so it does not seem to be able to attack right away. Does the spiritual weapon get an attack of opportunity? It does not. It has no reactions. Uh, actually, it's, it's a spell, though, right? Because I do have Warcaster as a feat. Um, and then that keeps opportunity attacks with spells. It, you get to use your reaction yeah. to use opportunity attacks, but you do not, not get it. to give it to a spell of your own. Okay. Um, yeah, if someone moved away from you, you could try to whack him with a just spell. Just to be checking here. It still wouldn't be the uh, that spell, because oh. that's a level 2. It, it flies at 60, so it actually does have the opportunity to attack when it gets there. Um, so it will attempt to, to strike at Medric. Uh, and as it strikes, it lets out this ungodly screech. Uh, but I don't believe in 11 hits. Nope. As the screech washes over you. Um, Valenti. Uh, Valenti will cry out, No! The vessel is gone. I have to build another one. And you see various lights on the console from where you're standing, um, Medric, start to light up. But it will be a while before anything happens. Uh, Gosh gets to make a death save. You got this, bro. Um, oh, you did have a plus D4 on any roll from last round because you were guided, but you didn't end up making a roll and supposed to just trying something? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't roll anything. So oh, it's still there for a minute. But... And a death save is just a D20, which I recently remembered. Oh, that's one successful death save. Barely, but one successful. Still counts. Uh, Annie, you're up. That's some D's get degrees logic right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, right beside you, uh, Silas has collapsed to the ground. Yep. Um, Quick, stab I, him fast. <laughs> <laughs> Technically counts as a backstab. I will... Um... Uh, no, I'm in the room. Annie's out with the ghosts. Oh, Turned sorry. Around. That's right. She was moving back and forth, and I kind of... You know, yeah. she she had to move. She was looking over Dudek's shoulder. Yes, and then I went back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't see them go back. Fair enough. Well, down the hallway, um... you hear the thud of, of, of <laughs> wet fabric as Silas collapses to the ground. If I can remember how breathing works. Please do. Um, I am going to... I don't know why d, &D Beyond is acting all funny. Give me two seconds. <laughs> it's like not giving me the like square to switch page between pages. Oh. What? Oh, it's... I lowered my... If you made it too small, seconds. there's the squares at the bottom now. No, my uh, my actual like page was below the start menu. Like it was like oh. I only had part of it. That's why I wasn't finding it was because the actual frame was too big. Don't know how that happened, but it did. There we go. Okay. Uh, I, I am going to hit this thing with. Um, I'm actually going to remember that dual wielding is a thing. Okay. And pull out my other dagger in my offhand, and I'm going to stab it with my offhand first. Okay. Ooh, natural 19. Which, wait, wait, well, wait, that's wait. A crit. I, I forgot I'm, I forgot I'm part of fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, D&D &D Beyond, for remembering that I'm part fighter. Um... <laughs> So it would be, uh, oh, 
uh, piercing have, damage, it would be minus three. You do have an ally three. beside you, so we do get the uh, crit damage as well. Yeah. So it would be minus three, because that's my modifier, because it's my offhand. Okay, so we're looking at 41. Uh, <laughs> Rogues, man. <laughs> uh, as you but, stab into it, you're probably using its momentum as it flies in to attack right beside you <gasps> and kind of... Uh, was that your offhand though? Because you don't get that, your you don't get your. So minus three is my offhand. Okay. <laughs> the offhand attack of forty one damage. <laughs> uh, as you as you kind of use its momentum as it flies in and kind of buffers itself, uh, you are able to stab the the dagger deep within this strange shadowy form, and just using your weight, you carve out this V shape in the bottom of it. It is still alive. But very ragged at the moment, and definitely going to be turning its attention on you. And probably well, if you didn't realize two people were there, it would have done something different. But it didn't. Well, I am going to then uh, stab it with vice. <laughs> yeah. So this roll just wouldn't get the, the sneak attack. Oh, no, that's bad. Nope. Uh, an 11. 11 does not hit. Phew. But that did frighten everything there. Uh, that was funny. Okay. Do that. See, my brain remembered that I can use an offhand attack and damage it to then get the extra damage with Vice with my main. Although hand. You'd, you'd only get the sneak attack damage once. You would only get the sneak attack, attack damage once. But. But. Exploding dagger for the win. Uh. Moving on to Dudek. Dudek is uncertain, but for now he's going to call uh, Evolve a not likely, because it seems to be confusing at the moment. I think you have a reason. I just, I'm not sure if I can put my finger on it. Uh, and once more, he's going to try to narrow it down. And he's. Dudek can fight, but in academic matters, he's much more deliberate and hard to speed along. And at this point, he's just, right, by th taking this and this, um, the certain alchemical formulas that, and so forth. However, 23 this time. Ah, well, I can most likely definitively say that it is probably not um, transfigure or mutate. Transfiguration is typically. Uh, let me see if I can find the symbol here. Do, do, do. I wrote the explanations, or I thought of the explanations, two months ago. So pardon me if I if I am somewhat uh, um, forgetful. Uh, transfiguration is just simply a rearranging of what you have. That's that's not what we're looking for here. And mutations are uncontrolled, and this seems like a very tightly controlled process. Um, so that leaves four possible choices. Evolve, which are somewhat calm on at the moment. Transmute, transit, and transmogrify. Um, so he has at least eliminated some of the possibilities. Medric, you have this creature wavering in front of you, split from basically sternum to toe, however, from a, a an offhand attack. It almost looked like it was just a preparatory attack from Annie, but maybe that faint. I may was... or may not be ambidextrous. Who knows? <laughs> it, uh, it it may have been, uh, you know, just a feint to make it believe that her left hand was any less. Well, I'm not sure if she's left-handed, right-handed, or off-hand was not uh, as strong. But it still is before you, and you can see it kind of gathering itself, almost billowing a little bit. Well, I'm going to split it even further with a hammer, which I guess doesn't really split things. But... Ha! Okay, then maybe this special weapon will split it. Oh my god, really? Pair of ones. <laughs> Fuck. Ooh. Uh, as, you, <sighs> as you kind of are trying to, but the first strike from, bef be in, from in, uh, in front just happens to whiff right through that same massive V cut that uh, Annie made. And the one from back, as it, as it gets ready to, to do whatever it's going to do, uh, it just sort of swipes too low. And in fact, you see a little too closely what it's like to, to uh, experience the spiritual hammer very close to your face. Even though you know it's innocuous to you, it still was 
an, an oddly, an odd perspective moment where you're kind of realizing, oh, that's what all the enemies uh, see when they see the spiritual hammer coming at them. That's impressive. I kind of like that. But at the same time, that was probably not what you intended. Uh, shit. Yeah, in more ways than one. I just forgot we had downed allies. My bad. If we wipe, it's my fault, as and usual. Unfortunately, as we come back around the top, uh, we will check that one more. Do -do. Why am I like this? That does not recover. Uh, that thing is still there. So another action. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, it's only a one. All right. As Oops. in the future, if I if I need to like heal people, so somebody should remind me because I'm I'm just like too li li literally like too fucking dumb to play this game properly. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's just a lot to keep track of. That's no much. worries. Uh, I need to go to that layer. And that uh, appears over here. Uh, oh. There we go. As out of the uh, Merc once more appears just one um, quickly moving shadow. But you can't quite make out from there. Uh, back around to Silas, who's now making death saves. Natural twenty. Huh. <laughs> as you as you uh, find your eyes fluttering open, uh, as a, a small whisper from the back of your mind, not as distant as it has been. So many times. Arise, my son. There's much work to do. And I can sense you not far. The voice of the mother revives you back to one hit point. As I remember, I get my turn, too. I believe you do. Well, that's half of the options used up. Um, I guess he's going to try and analyze what's been done to see if he can figure out the right numbers. Okay. Guidance lasts for a minute. Yep. It is a spiritual gift. And I will say that death, did, or potential death, did not <laughs> dissuade Ignis from potentially helping you. So you can add the D4 into that as well. Um, whatever skill you'd like, perception is appropriate, but I can certainly see a, a justification for possible others. Yeah, again, I mean, the only thing he's got for stuff like this is Arcana, and if it's not strictly magical, it's probably not appropriate. His investigation's even worse than his perception. And uh, with the D4? 12, yeah, I'll see. 13. 13. All right. Um, what you notice or what you start to realize was a factor you weren't taking into account was the fact that the far end of the balance has weight on it already. Mm -hmm. And because it has weight, you'll have to balance that weight as well. Yep. I was actually trying that. Okay. Now I will allow you to try to hang one. Okay, so what does far end of the beam mean? Is that the cup end or the not cup end? The not cup end. Okay, but yeah. putting the maximum weight on the cup end was going the wrong way. Because it already had some weight on it. Now, I'll give you this as well. So long as the far end is not too heavy, it will not smash into the top part and activate the reaction. So you can use that potentially as a way to try something without having to trigger or without triggering the lightning. Is the cup end the one that's going up or not? Yes. Okay. Um...
I'll just put the two point weight on the far end and leave it alone. I got no ideas. Okay. Um, as you put the, the two point weight on the far end, which is already weighted down, it does drive it upward and once more comes into contact, activating the reaction. So a constitution saving throw. I'm out. I get one hit point. Um, I'll allow you to take back that action, kind of envisioning what would happen because you are so close to that and you wouldn't be risking necessarily. Okay, I put the two point at the other end then. At the end with the cup? The end that I did not just put it on. Okay. Whichever one that is. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. As you're hanging the two weight on, you realize that the far end is heavier than that still and would smash upwards. So you hang it, but then quickly take it off, realizing it would be too light. Okay. I don't get how the far end being heavier makes it smash upwards faster. So it's on a pivot? Or I'm putting it on the... Am I putting it on the cup end then? If you you just put the two on the cup end and realized okay. it was not heavy enough to drag the cup down from being smashed in. It is not, and I will say in in a certain way, this is not strictly a balance in terms sorry, not strictly a mm -hmm. physical problem. Um it is also a combination problem. Because technically if the far end was already too heavy, putting nothing on it would smash it up there but that isn't you doing something to it to activate the whole mechanism. As soon as you add something to it, it activates the mechanism, it checks it, and then fails. Sure. But what you have determined from that one is that the far end is heavier than two. Yep. Okay. Uh, that one, technically I have these in reverse order, but... That one is going to be in front of Annie and uh, Medric, having nearly died from a glancing blow from Annie, having survived two not-quite-glancing blows from Medric, from front and back, um, will then, uh, as it has been building up, a screech in front of the two of you. Um, so, it is a... 30 foot radius sound, which I think that in fact does not get Dudek, but it does actually get um, Silas. Um, all of you, please make a wisdom saving throw. That includes me, right? That is right. 17, 23 if it's magic. Okay. Um, yeah, I. Um, doesn't specifically say it's magic. It's a 15. sound. Fifteen. No, all of you succeeded anyway. Uh, as the as the frightening screech waves over all of you, to no effect. Uh, and seeing that, hmm. I I'm like I just stare at it audible blinking mode. <laughs> It's not used to that reaction being so blithe. Um, but it has no care for itself, so it will stay where it is. Uh, that is an action, so it is done for the turn. Uh, Valenti on the inside. Once more, let's see if her roll is better than last time. Uh, ah. uh, as you hear uh, additional... Um, forces being activated on the console in front of you and can actually see um, lights glowing from within the room on the far side. So um, over on this side, where if you recall, there were pieces of equipment, armors, and different things there. Um that is Valenti's turn. Gosh. Gosh is making a death save. He's made one. 
Uh, let's see. I won't forget you this time, Gosh. Uh, gets an 18. Oh, oh well, 16, this. but still succeeds. Uh, that's two successes. May not be dying entirely just yet. Annie. You're muted. Well. There we go. Uh, I am going to stab again. Stab and stab again. This stab is an offhand stab. attack again? or uh, Offhand first, yeah. And I'll just apply my sneak attack to... Ah, Kemi. <laughs> apply your sneak attack to a Kemi. Oh, no. Ah, Cat never sad. saw it coming. Uh, let's see here. I'll just add it to whichever first attack hits. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it matters for that which dagger no. you're using. As long as they're both magic anyways. No, one's normal. Miss with the offhand. Wait, was that first dagger not a magical dagger? No, it was not. It was oh. just a, a regular dagger. It's not looking quite as bad as originally thought. Yeah, that 41 would have been a 20. Still looking ragged, but recovered somewhat. Let's put it that way. Vice! Oh, but that's a crit. <laughs> All right. Let's see how much this turns into. Uh, 48? Um, 48 minus 3. 45. Uh, no, that was your, that was Vice, wasn't it? That was Vice. I don't, I don't get, um, my, um, I, I'm not at half damage. So there's three of that damage oh, right. that wouldn't happen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, so, uh, yeah, 40, <laughs> 45 kind of makes up for the 20 that it mysteriously didn't take last time. And sure enough. It balances it, being, it. With it being a magical creature or a magical attack, I should say. Um, yes, this time it is. Describe to me how you epically take this one out. Um, I want to stab it in the eye. Ooh, okay. <laughs> So as it maybe as it's it's it kind of leans forward, lets out its bellowed screech. Its head is right there, and you take vice and stab it sideways through the eye. The the point of vice coming out the other side of it, and you just pull backwards, splitting its entire front in two, its head in two, and twain. And then it just sort of in a in a pitiful version of the frightening screech it was attempting to do, just sort of dissipates into wisps of shadow, and vanishes. Good job. Well, that was satisfying. Yeah. Um, you still have your movement or anything else you'd care to try? Um, you have heard something outside, but you're not sure what? You said that one of the puzzles is more dex based, so I'm going to go. I'm going to ask Madrick which one that was and go to that puzzle. Yeah, Medrick would indicate that these, the alignment of cylinders is the center part here. Mm -hmm. And you see beside you a very ragged-looking Silas with the weights in hand kind of back and forth. And on the other side, Dudek, who's like, if I carry the three... My gut feeling on, on the other puzzle is tra transmogrify. It's either... Friends, what was it? I hope I closed them. It was transmute, transit. It was transmutate or transmogrify. Are the, are the two that my brain is between. We can count that as a bonus action help, if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, do deck up, Nate, next. I see where you're going with this. Let me work this out. And once more, it's going to come down to a roll of him trying to work it out, but this time with advantage. <laughs> oh, okay. I was looking at the second one, which is a pair of 11s, and I thought, really, with advantage? But no, the first one is a critical success. Aha! I see what you're saying. Um, I had already managed to to eliminate, transfigure, and mutate. And you are hinky about evolve, which left transmute, transit, and transmogrify. I'm going to eliminate transit right away 
because I don't believe this was all just for a single passage between transmute and transmogrify. And once more, I'll bring up the, the translations. And transmutate, sorry. Transmogrify has the wrong sort of connotation. From what I understand of the Argente Sagax, and he starts going into this story that he'd been reading and some of his theories and maybe Silas part of an shouts, essay. Let's talk more action. So suppress so transmutate, got it. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and in fact, he drops transmutate into the spot and nothing happens for about three seconds until the whole thing kind of shifts, it sinks in a little bit further, and the lightning from below seems to surge up into the pod itself. Aha! I've gotten it. Very good observations. I shall have to write this down, and proceeds to try to make notes at the same time that all the rest of us is going on. But you have now succeeded in <coughs> another one. Medric. You see in the corner of your eye that Silas is on his feet again, wavering considerably. Gosh is not on his feet and breathing shallowly. All right, Gosh is going to get a... Hammer to the face. No, no. <laughs> right, hammer needs... Never see it coming now. I'm just trying to keep track of the hammer's turns. Gosh will get a heal of level one, so... Did I forget all my spells? I sure did. Can't find it. Yeah, Cure Wounds, 1d8 plus. Okay. Um, cure Wounds is touch, I believe. Okay. So just so you will have to move over there to do that. Diagonally. And from there... And he gets... Fuck, all the ones. He gets four hit points, but he's up. He will be up from that. Uh, and this time I know how to take... Get in! Off. As you see beyond him a shadowy form, um, no wings this time. Looks similar to the winged ones, but a little bit larger and slower, making its way across. And it's this guy. Can I drag Gosh back inside? Yeah, he's willing. Yeah. So if you have any movement left. Yeah. And he's going to go here or wherever. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can move him. All right. There's a thread outside. You got more company. I'll stream to my allies. And was that a bonus action to drag uh, Gosh inside? Just your movement. Okay. He's, so he's a willing creature, roll. so you don't really need an action to do it. I'll move the hammer to guard the door then. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sorted by a hammer. Right. Awful Sims mode. There's a plate in my way. <laughs> <laughs> what a curious light. I wonder what it tastes like. Um, it tastes like violence. <laughs> it tastes like violence. And I realize I don't have that one open yet. Um, and actually you can also notice that in this form of, of a human being um, one of the arms seems to elongate out taking on the shape of a, of a dark blade um, and what is its movement well that ain't good uh, it will raise the blade and there you go. Doop, 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 doop. Hmm, actually, I'll do that. Because. Um, and you see it move out of your vision to some place. 
built. I sure hope nobody casts a lightning bolt from Valenti over to Annie. <laughs> you can make a perception check. Who can? Uh, sorry, uh, Medric, who had seen this thing move. All right. Wrong dice. I think I have high perception from whatever. Yeah, plus five. 19. You lose sight of it as it goes beyond the side of the building. Damn. Um, There's a bigger thing crawling around, guys. I'm not sure where it's going to pop up next. I think it's currently climbing up. That broke up a bit, but I think they got the essence. She's part pirate. It's fine. Oh, there it is. I had lost my turn order. I was out of order. Uh, back around to the beginning. Okay. Uh, once more, you hear the sort of never-ending storm of, of something forming outside. Um, oh, yeah. And smaller now, but, but just on the edge of where you can see, I think, think Medric um, you do make out uh, what looks like two small um, shadowy humanoids just outside outside where like outside the door uh, outside of the courtyard so back in the courtyard oh, okay way back, back there on the edge of where this massive being I've represented as a single thing but it's actually the entire wall is there so Silas? Once more, you stand before these um, these weights with a much better idea, perhaps, of how things might go. Oh, are you frozen? Maybe. Yeah, he's not moving on my screen. I think he might not be frozen. Not moving on mine either. Rip. <laughs> uh, well, we can we can wait a moment. Uh, let's see. Well. Oh. Quickly freezing. Didn't hear much of that. Looks sounds like you are freezing quite badly. Yeah, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. Uh, we heard you clearly that time, at least, so it might be getting clearer. <laughs> we went from nothing to stuttering to hearing. I mean, I know that Marie's kind of like under, under attack by a cat. I'm not sure if that's an influence. If the cats are going, it's time to stop now. Um, uh, well, anyways, uh, I said, uh, if the far end is heavier than a two weight, then mm -hmm. I'll try a three weight on it. Okay. Um, once more, a perception check this time with advantage. Eleven. Okay. Um, you aren't quick enough to react to it. You do realize that the weight on the other end is heavier than a three but it ends up triggering the response. Uh, it will be a constitution mm. saving throw with advantage. And now because you're aware of it, well, it the save will be no damage. Uh, 
I only have one hit point, so even if it does half damage. As I suggested, because you're aware of it, uh, save is now no damage. There we go. There's a whole lot of them. Holy moly. Okay. Uh, the first con save was a natural one. Uh, and with advantage, it's a six, which is not much better. So unfortunately, there is a burst of lightning once more, and once more, um, Silas goes down. No. Does it just affect Silas? It does just affect him. Yeah, it's okay. not a it's not a radius. Oh, are nope. you? Yeah, you're kind of right there, but it is because literally he's holding on to it at the time. It's literally a touch thing. Okay. But you see him go down. Uh, Rip. That one. These will proceed over. To there. And they're going to run. Just inside. This one's going to take the more straightforward route. To once more fly. So, in front of you, Medric, and out of the corner of your eye, you can see over the other side of the room, two more of those specters have appeared. And the other corner of your other eye, <laughs> you notice that uh, Silas has gone down. Uh, Valenti is once more trying to do what she's doing. Um, you realize now, oh, nice, natural 20. Um, you realize that once the the um, armor outside had gone down, um, there was no defender. Mm -hmm. However, um, you hear from the speakers a delighted yes as Valenti has completed what she was doing. Uh, and stomping out of the other side, and squeezing through the large doors is a bigger version of the armor that is jogging its way over to you, but it is not that fast. This one is twice the size of a human, um, so about 12 feet tall. Uh, it is multiply configured. In other words, it is some sort of automaton, but it does not have to move as one solid object. That's how it can get through the doors. It actually reconfigures itself to squeeze through the doors. Cool. It may have other modes, uh, but that was Valenti's action. Gosh. It's a transformer. Kind of. Gosh is... Gosh is up. Um, Gosh is going to go here. And you hear in your head, I will work with you. And it's going to aid you in combat because it realizes you have magical attacks where it does not. So it'll give you advantage <laughs> on your attacks if you choose to attack. Keeping in mind that on the other side of you, Silas has also gone down. Mm -hmm. Any. Beside you, you can see Silas. This time, you actually do see Silas go down. Yep. Um, I am going to... Give me two seconds here. Uh, one more thing, Silas. From... Trying the three, you know that both that the far end is heavier both than two or three. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to confirm. Where did I have a potion of healing that is going in his gullet? I'm going to use my action to do that. Silas okay. heals and drowns. Uh, <laughs> you can't drown. <laughs> Although breathing health potions is probably not recommended. Uh, in Baldur's Gate, you apparently can throw them at people and it works. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? So you can throw them, but if you actually hit them, you have to throw it beside someone who's down, or else the damage of you hitting them with the vial <laughs> brings them down again. It's an interesting rule. <laughs> um, so roll yes, the... Uh... Yes, you can, you can throw them. It's great. <laughs> roll the healing potion. Let's see how much Silas recovers. <laughs> Of healing. 2d4 plus 2. Nine points. Nine. Nice. Sweet. Better than one. I have no more healing potions. That was my last one. I'm the king of ones this week. Yes, it happens, unfortunately. But your ally is now recovered, sputtering back to life. 
the first thing you see, Silas, is Annie looking over you. What does what does Annie look like in this moment? Kind of disheveled. She she's like, "What the fuck is going on? I thought you had this um, <laughs> magic stuff. Not my thing. Not magic. It's math. <laughs> Rip. Also math, not my thing." <laughs> Um, you still have movement and a bonus action if you want to use those. You do see, you would see through the door that another shadow has appeared or another smaller shadow, Spectre, has appeared by um, Medric. You're muted. So, so th uh, this is a, another Spectre? It is another one, yeah. Okay. Okay. That is a killing uh, spot, though, that seems to be half of them die there, so I'm not sure if it was a great idea for him to go. I mean, he doesn't know that. He wasn't there. That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm I gonna... was just born. This seems like a good spot. Ah. <laughs> uh, I am going to stay here uh, for now, and basically I'm going to try to figure out what because this is the puzzle that was the dex based one thing. yeah okay the one in the middle okay i'm going to observe that and then try to deal with that on my next turn okay um dudek having succeeded at one looks very happy with himself finishes up his notes closes his book and then looks around to see how terrible everybody else looks right now um oh no um without anything specific with anything specific he will step over to beside Silas help him with the math <laughs> and um, he will give you advantage as he helps you um, Medric you're up alright there is a thing standing in front of me there is and a assistant okay. by your side. Gosh, Gosh is up, and so is Medric, or and so is Silas. Yep. Everybody for okay. once is alive. You can right. just fight things. It's great. Um, but it's basically, uh, Gosh is there, kind of waving, you know, fainting attacks to try to get it into a better position for you to hit it. Uh, and you can choose to use the advantage on yourself or on your spiritual weapon, but not both. Well, the advantage is going to be on the spiritual weapon because it's it does more damage. Okay. So it will take a swing. Ha! 16. 16 hits. And what kind of damage remind me that the spiritual weapon does? I don't think it Fire. matters in this case. Uh, force. Force? Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's no difference. So nine force damage. Nine force damage. A nice solid hit. Uh... As it, uh, so you did not use the advantage. I didn't. Oh, uh, right. You uh, only rolled once, so it did hit. You can use the advantage on your own attack if you like, or you can search for a crit. Yeah, I'll use the advantage on my own attack. Okay. Considering how I've been rolling, the, the chances of a crit are not likely. And once again, for... you get this 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 uh, appearance of the flaming hammer kind of cutting through it and then poking out a little bit as it uh, does some pretty good damage. Um, you can roll the second oh, 19. time. Plus, yeah. okay. Both of them hit, but no crits. Um, so go ahead and roll damage. And that is with your... Hammer. Hammer. Which is not magical. Not so magical. five. Okay. Mediocre, but... So not quite as effective. I kind of like the idea, though, that, that uh, the two of you, you and your spiritual hammer and your real hammer kind of cling together in the middle and this little little uh, burst of flame and sparks um, doesn't have any extra effect but it's, I think it's, I think it was a cool moment um, you still have your movement and you did your bonus action to the uh, already so yep so I'm pretty much done stay where you're at okay yep because if, if, if I don't then it, it gets an opportunity to attack and Gosh is all the uh, and then Gosh is all there by itself on that all right. Well, uh, this one now, let's see. I think it will attack at you because you're the most obvious target. Um, let's see. It is an attack. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. Yep. Uh, please, you take 14 necrotic damage and make a constitution saving throw. 
John save. Did it would only take a few months for me to forget how to read a character sheet, but here we are. Yeah. And that's 13. 13 is enough. enough. You feel the icy tendrils of its claws cut through to your very soul, but your soul burns brightly with the fire of Ignis and rejects its advance. Uh, the other one moves through the slit in the wall to come up behind you and make the same attack. Uh, that is a 13 to hit. That's not, that's not hit. That misses. Okay. That's all of their rounds. Beginning of the next round. That does not come back. Uh, it's going to... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to do that. Uh, as two more... Large bowls or large balls of, of hideous energy form on the wall. They do not act this turn, but they begin to form. Uh, oops, one second, please. They are those. Oh, shoot, those aren't the ones I thought they were. Ha, 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 never mind. Uh, in fact, he will sacrifice that to become one of those. So the two um, end up forming into one, as you see another one of those largest things uh, forming up, right beside where the large um, me uh, mechanical creature has emerged, however. Uh, Silas, you do have uh, Dudek helping you out with any observations? Okay. I'm going to put the five on that end instead of the three. Okay. And when the five pulls down on the cup, it pulls down and stays down, not activating the other or, or uh, not, act, not causing it to pull up. You now know that what is on the other end is lighter than a five. Okay. Then I'll add the two okay. to that end to try to... I think it's that end to swing it up. Whichever end it needs to swing up, anyways. I add the two. The cup end is the one that needs to swing up. And you already okay. know that at five, it's heavier than the other end. So Sorry? Want, so the cup end has the five on it right now, mm -hmm. which is heavier than the far end. So adding the two presumably just makes it even heavier. Okay, so it wasn't five. Okay, I'll add the three then. To the cup end or to the... Far the, end. The far end. Okay. Um, it begins to to draw the whole thing up, meaning the far end is now heavier than the cup end. Uh, I will allow you to make a dexterity saving throw with advantage. Okay. That's enough this time to pull back from it, and because you know it's coming, you take no damage. Uh, but now you know that whatever the, at the other end, plus three, is heavier than five. Okay. Do I need to make it even heavier than that, or do I need to make it lighter than that? I currently have no idea which end needs to do what. So They need I, to be even, correct? So I think that Dudek, after you kind of describe this to him a little bit, so I think I understand what's going on here. You have an unknown weight at the far end, and you want to put balance to both sides. So you need to add something to each side, perhaps, to make it balanced. How heavy do you okay. think the far side is? I thought I was supposed to make the end go up. It seems to be about balance, strangely enough. Because if it's going up, it's going up too far. It just needs to go up to an even point. I no longer have any sense of what's going on. Can I make a roll? Sure. Everyone else gets to make a roll to solve theirs. 
I, you've been rolling each time. It's just been unfortunate the rolls haven't been that well. You do have advantage because Dudek is helping you on this. 21. 21. By process of elimination, you believe the other one to be, if these are all in even units, it would be four units. So you need to make the same total at both ends with two, three, five, and four. Both, gotcha. ends, go, both ends can have as many uh, as you wish added on to them. Mm -hmm. Five plus two and then three plus four. You think you've got it figured it out, and maybe next round you'll have the chance to mm -hmm. to go at it. Sure. Uh, the next turn. Uh, let's see. You've already failed, so it is up to Gosh. Uh, that was not the what I wanted. I wanted the roll. There we go. Perception. Gosh does not succeed, so neither of you are fully aware uh, of the creature as it sneaks in behind and will be visible when it attacks uh, as the assassin sneaks in to behind Medric. Uh, just a simple straightforward attack, it looks like. First strike on Medric is a 13. I don't think that hits. Uh, is that correct? That's not hit. Okay. Uh, then takes a second slash. Oh, sorry, these are with advantage, so it would be... Oh. Uh, oh, the first one is a 25. That probably hits. Yeah. And the second one's a 26. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on the first strike... You take five points of piercing damage. And, wow, these rolls are weird. Uh, Ten points of necrotic damage. So 15 total. So 15 total. You're not immune to necrotic damage, correct? Nope. Uh, okay. Just let me pull up a calculator because math is hard. Sure. 22 minus 15. Okay. Okay. Your strength is reduced by two as you feel your vital essence being drawn out from you. Is that permanent or? As far as you know. No, not, not that it's going to matter because I'm probably dead. Uh, ten points for the second strike of piercing damage. Are you close? Yeah, I'm out. You're out? Yep. Okay. Oh, wait, no, half work resolved. So, yeah, I'm, I'm dead next. Okay, well, there's still there's still necrotic damage, which is another seven damage on top of that. But doesn't half work resolve like happen after that? Well, this is all damage at one time, so yes, actually, you're right. Half half work resolve would be after all this damage. Um, hmm, interesting question. Yeah, I have one hit point. Woo! And your strength is, I'll say the strength reduction doesn't happen because you went down, so it's not actually targeting a living attack at that point. However, your strength is effectively too lower, so which would be, mean everything you're rolling with strength, you're rolling at a minus one. Well, okay. Minus one on top, top of your total. But you feel your life force ebb and flow as this shadow blade appears from behind you. Oh, actually, well, I think the first rolls are good anyway. The first roll would have only been the, the only one with attack, or a sneak attack, essentially. Not sneak attack, hidden attack, but. Uh, yeah, that was pretty devastating. Don't get hit by that again. I'll do my best. Recommend it. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's its turn. Um, oh, actually, it has movement left. It will attempt to move away and squeeze back out through the, the window that's over there and try to duck away. Both you and Gosh, however, do get opportunity attacks. That's not the right one. Uh, unfortunately, 25 to hit. Uh, 25 definitely hits. No, that's not right. Eight damage. Okay. And what weapon were you using? Hammer. Okay. Yeah, the spiritual weapon was too far away. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be able to do um, uh, reactions anyway. 
Right. Um, but right, I could have used a spell. Fuck. You could have used a spell, yes. Um, <laughs> Why am I so fucking dumb? I swear. Nah, there's just a lot of stuff, and it's been a while since we've done this, so it sometimes comes up in the moment. It happens like um, over and over, and in every. Actually, like, uh, it's just a thing. go ahead and cast the spell because it's something we're all forgetting. So go ahead and use a spell as opposed to the attack. Right, sacred flame. Uh, sacred uh, flame doesn't target. It has to be a spell that targets, I believe. No. Nope. No, sacred flame targets. Any one act. It's any one action. Sacred spell. flame has a save. Sacred flame has a save. Oh. But it doesn't have to be a targeted spell. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's a save on its side. What's the save for Sacred Flame? Dex? 15. 15. Uh, uh, I don't I, I, I know. It's Dex. Dex? All right. Uh, 13. It does not save. Okay, so 2. Where is my dice roller? And this that is was weird because usually you're a second one has like shown up at the same time but th there was a delay on that one. Oh yeah well, it happened to be the same that's weird um okay and this is radiant damage from sacred flame i believe yes okay as it bursts uh from the fire and you see very satisfyingly that it shredded part of it uh, which you can take to interpret as it is probably vulnerable to radiant damage um, Another question is why was I why why was I not using that like the entire time instead of using my hammer? Great job, next great job. Uh, saves are sometimes a little bit weird depending on what you're facing against. Um, it's nice to be active and actually attack things, but you know what? It's something to learn. Uh, Volenti is now going to run to the rescue. This crazy big thing is going to move in and squeeze sideways through the door in a really bizarre way, but only has to kind of stand in the door, sees that thing right there. Where are we here? Hasn't a chance to make an attack for a while. Uh, and will... Uh, oh, shoot. It's the other one. Pardon me as I look something up. Shoot. I forgot to bring up that character sheet, too. Mm -mm -mm. Um, hmm. uh, there it is. And again, I'm using, I'm reskinning a lot of creatures here, so uh, that one is those. So, yeah, it charges in 25 to hit. Non-magical damage. Still does 27. And at half, that's enough to destroy that thing in front of you. As it literally comes in and just sort of reconfigures itself to put all of its weight basically forward, balanced onto the arm, and comes smashing through that arm. That creature is down. Uh, Gosh sees this and sees the other creature and will once again kind of help you out rather than trying to attack itself, knowing that its own its own claws are not sufficient. Much appreciated. Um, actually, yes, yeah. Um, if it gives you advantage on an attack, it won't affect if you're doing the the spiritual flame, but you can use the spiritual weapon and use the bonus on that one. Uh, Annie, you're up. You're muted. Okay, so I came here to do the more dex-based thing over here. Right. So what was that? So when you look in and start to get the timing, you see there are whirling pillars inside that need to be aligned. They are not straight on to where they need to be. But there are also additional gears and other twisting things, as well as the actual energy of the place itself. It doesn't look like it's a, it's a, it's a complicated problem. Literally, it would be to reach in and align the columns. However, it does look treacherous inside, such as you could lose fingers. Hopefully not. So... And I'm open to clever solutions, but 
So could I could I use steady steady aim in the sense of the same vibe of like calm the mind and steady and go with a, a sleight of hand? Hmm. I like it. Sure. So you take basically, a moment. You get in sync with it. And go ahead and roll. This would be a sleight of hand check if you're doing it directly with your hand. Yep. Uh, that would be with advantage because that's what steady aim does. Yep. Oh, that cheated on really, really bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you are steady, but the thing has a bit of a chaotic movement to it. Uh, and you do find your fingers pinched for eh, only four points of of uh, bludgeoning damage at this point. However, it is now slightly more chaotic than it was before, and you feel like the damage could be worse. Okay. You also do know there are two pillars to align, so two successes will be needed. Okay. Let's rethink this. Okay. As you're rethinking it, Dudek is standing beside you. I, this is not my thing, I'm afraid. Do you, I will, I will lend my aid to you, Silas. I, I think you've worked it out by now. Yeah, but help I, him with the map. I believe in you. So, hand on the shoulder, he will give you advantage on your attempt. Medric with this massive creature behind you. And now up close, you see, not only does it reconfigure, it seems to have small uh, gem, um, small gems on little bubbles all around the outside of the armor. Not entirely unlike the figure you had seen of Valenti inside the tube itself. Ooh. You also have Gosh standing by to help. Where is my window? So there is one specter in front of me. There is. And then there's whatever, wherever that shadow is, um, who you lose sight of, but you kind of know where it is beyond the wall. Though. All right. The glory of midday can't go through walls, can it? I don't believe so. Or can it? I'm just going to double check just in case. Sure. I guess I can look that up too, can I? Each creature within 30 feet of me. It doesn't say that I can see. All right, that's probably my loophole, but I will give it for now. You can definitely give it a try. Um, I should know where that is, and I'm blanking for the moment. Oh, yeah, Domain Ignis. That's what it is. Just confirm that. I might have, like, misread things, because I've been, like, having issues reading recently, which is just fucking great. <laughs> of Ignis. Because I think that's the one of the ones that I wrote, right? Yeah. Uh... All right. Uh, glory of midday. As an action, you present your holy symbol to any magical witness is gone. Additionally, each hostile creature within 30 feet of you must make a constitution saving throw. Yep, it goes through everything. Oh, wait, although I should probably heal myself. Um, eh. oh, keep in mind that if they don't succeed, it also blinds them. Yeah, I suppose. All right, glory of midday. DC oh, 20, sorry. Uh, DC 50. A creature with total cover from you is not affected. So behind a wall would count as total cover. Oh, okay. Crap. Yeah, I'll heal myself then. <laughs> <laughs> with a level four, because panic. 48 plus three. So 17 hit points. Nice. All right. Quick heal. Spiritual weapon, I'm assuming? Yes, the spiritual weapon will attack 
with advantage, Thank thanks to yes. Gosh. Thank you, Gosh. God. 21 to hit. 21 definitely hits. Wait, is that 2d8 or 1d8? That I swing with. Um, uh, roll another d20 because you have advantage. You might crit. All right. Yeah. Nope. No crit. Um, okay, a spiritual weapon, 2d8. Uh, spiritual weapon roll. at... Um, at the base level, it's 1d8 plus your casting modifier. Right, unless you cast it at higher levels. Right, okay, so 1d8. Just 1d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier. So the same one I rolled the d20 with? Uh, uh, well, it'd just be your wisdom modifier. Yeah. So d8 plus okay, so three. three. Five. But it is. Sorry, I'm so slow. No, no worries. We're all getting used to this again. Don't worry about that at all. Just got to make sure I recognize which one it is. That one is not affected by radiant damage differently, so it's just the five. But it is five. And it does take a swath out of it. Um, probably not going to move, I'm assuming, but you can... No. Okay. You do have now a big creature at your back as a support. Exactly. Uh, however, uh, the Spectre in turn is going to try to once more strike at you. But I have hit points now. Uh, but you have hit points, which is always handy. However, double ones for me. Not that the second attack matters, because it's just a click problem. So yes, it completely misses you. So we're having we're taking turns having ones. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning of the next round. That does not come back. It already has people in the field, so that takes no action. Silas. With, okay. uh, I with said the support. five plus two and the three plus four. All right. And indeed, it comes to an equilibrium. Closes just gently enough, so no longer having too much additional force. Um, you can hear the spinning up of the material within the tub above it, and it seems to be at full force. Uh, beside you, Medrick, you can actually see another light has lit up on the console, ready to be pressed. Silas gently slides away from it so he doesn't jostle it. <laughs> Fair enough. And with some support from from uh, from uh, Dudek as well. Well done. Uh, that is... I don't know if I have any of these left or not, but uh, any, you got this. Have our D6 Bardic Inspiration. Oh, fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, now for this one, uh, it's making me that roll, 23, that sounds pretty good. Uh, there's not really anything there. Hmm. Yeah, it's facing in that direction. So, once more. Uh, Medric, you can make a perception check. Uh, Medric, a perception check. Crap, that didn't go through. Yeah, let me check. Perception. D20. 10. Okay. That's garbage. You are not aware of where that thing has gone to. Uh, let's see. And actually, I'll make one for that as well. It does not have much for perception. Wisdom. Wow, that's much worse. Okay. Uh, Valenti doesn't have any actions other than to 
So you're almost there. Uh, gosh, we'll once again help Medric to fight because it's much more effective than trying to do it itself. Annie, probably shaking out the fingers, getting ready. I am going to pull out of my bag the plus one boomerang. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And I'm going to use this magical item to try to hook around the pillar and align. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> um, I have never used this weapon. Might as well use it for not weapon purposes. Sure. Um, so uh, go ahead and make your sleight of hand roll. Um, you have the d6 bonus from Silas. Can I try to steady aim it again? Um, sure. Deep okay, breaths. Helps it. Try to focus and concentrate. And I'm just like, <laughs> boomerang. Okay, so that would be... I will say it's slightly more difficult because the boomerang doesn't have fingers. That's fair. But it has like a hook shape instead. It was that or a dagger, and a dagger is straight. Yeah. It's not terrible, but it's a little harder. Yep. Uh, so... There is, however, that matter of not you having your fingers caught in this, so, you know. Exactly. So sleight of hand with advantage plus d6 and the d6. Okay, that is a success. Uh, as you jam the uh, the boomerang in and catch it just under the lip of one of these gears that's turning around and just twist just at the right time, the uh, piston uh, sockets in with the other side and starts to spin uh, in in motion with the rest of the machine. One more of these to go, but now you've got the, oh. the trick of it. Didn't mean to, to do that second one there. It's all right. I've been doing that all night. Um, I don't know what's up with yours. Yeah, I, I think it's just a sticky mouse button, unfortunately. But one's mar rolling as Mark. One's rolling as Mark GM. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. <laughs> That's where the question Oh, I know what it is. is. It's the same problem I had last time. Oh, okay. I have two windows open, so I display the uh, the GM version to myself and the player version to you guys and to the stream. Since it sees two targets, it rolls twice. Same problem I ran into last time that I forgot about. So, mystery solved. Annoying, but mystery solved. So we just go with whichever the top one is. The GM one. Whatever's labeled GM would be the one. GM is the correct. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, mystery solved. Um, Dudek uh, kind of slaps his fingers together, or slaps his hands together. Right. Looks like you've got this well in hand, so to speak. Let me see if I can help them out. And then swiftly runs over. Uh, and what can Dudek do from there? His actions are... Oh. Hmm. He actually will go. Uh, yeah, he'll 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 run right up it really. Uh, and you see him start to to spin, as in kind of almost looking like a dancer at certain points. And then ends by a kick followed by a uh, followed by a punch. Let's see if I can get that to roll. First the kick. So weirdly, they're almost always the same, which is kind of throwing me a bit. Uh, and then the punch is a twenty to hit five damage, non magical. But it has, he has its attention. Um, Medric, you're up. 
Once more, you have Gosh's support. Excellent. You're not sure I'm where that other thing the... went to, however. Sorry about the cat meowing noises in the background. <laughs> it is time for supper, apparently. It's all good. Akemi was showing y'all her butt earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the spiritual weapon will take a swing at Spectre. Okay. With advantage. Five. 25. 25 is a hit. Swish. Oh, max damage. 11. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's magical. So that does go full. It is not gone, but it is wavering. Now, once more, retreating back from a full humanoid form into something resembling classic ghost, really. And then the Sacred Flame will come down on top of it. Mm. DC 15. DC 15. Dex. That is a Wait. four. <laughs> and that's 16 damage. And that is enough to dispel it entirely. I'm finally it rolling better away. and like getting a clue. No, that's fine. It's all We're all learning. You, you do not know how many times I've been questioning everything I'm doing here because I have so many pages open. But you've done well. You've dispatched it. You're still alive. But it is not. Um, you can you move. It. You do know there's something out there still, that one that uh, that slashed into you before, but you're not sure where it went to. I don't want to close that off again. If you wish to move, Medric, you're muted at the moment? or What was that? Uh, you, you do have your move left. And you do know there's one more creature out there, at least. Yeah, I'm not going after it. <laughs> All right. Stay where you're at. Yep. Um, you do know that a, a something on the panel lit up, which would be a reaction to turn it on. Just let me update this virtual weapon. Okay. I'm not the only person being attacked. That's true. So, you're Medric, right? you could reach over and flick a switch on the console, because you know one light has lit up, but it hasn't been activated yet. All right. I will do that. That is a free Snack. action. Do once yep. more... Kind of bring that into play. I'm contributing. You just killed a bunch of them. You're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, that does not come back. It has soldiers in the field. So it is now Silas's turn. You see Annie with a clever use of a boomerang working on this and with your inspirational words as well. Uh, well, Silas is going to... Uh... Stand beside her and try to help with timing. Uh, keep an eye on how things are moving and try to help it. So he's going to assist. Okay. Um, that one now gets to go around there. And from behind the massive creature or the massive... Uh, uh, armor. Once more, the blade reaches out. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. Again, weirdly the same. I do not understand how that happens. But it is successful. Um, if I can find the right page. There we go. Um, so, it does take damage. Takes five points. Again, the same. Weird. Uh, as well as necrotic damage, not nearly as much. Um, oh, it is not immune to it. However, it... Okay. Uh, yeah, it does take the damage. And you can see the... the um... well, that's not what I wanted. You can see the armor slowing down a little bit. And becomes a little bit more jagged in its motions. Uh, it's still tremendous, uh, but a little bit less so at the moment, as whatever powers it um, did seem to have an effect uh, from the shadow blade. Takes a second shadow blade attack, fifteen to hit. Hits. Uh, oh, it did all the rolling this time. That's weird. Oh, wait, it's a save. Pardon me. 
Uh, oh, it is not a save. Ooh, it's second. The second effect is not a save. That's that's just mean. Let's just have to do all of those. All right. So, out of in, in game terms, its strength is reduced by five at the moment. Um, putting it into the mortal category, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, that is its go. Valenti is urging you to continue, but has nothing else to really contribute at the moment. Gosh. Hmm. Gosh does not know how this thing reacts to it. So Gosh will move over and kind of just around the feet of this gigantic construct and stare at the creature. Um, and whispers in Medric's mind. Your magic of the gods will kill it. Which you realize is it is vulnerable to radiant damage. Yeah, excellent. Um, Annie. I am going to do a second attempt with the boomerang. Smart use of a thing that I've never used. I like it. I, I believe we've now found the next level... Um, crowbar. <laughs> crowbar, yeah. Um, oh, I could have cried with the crowbar, I guess. Um, uh, I am Just to let you know, to... the crowbar would have suffered a lot more. Oh, yeah. Magical weapon, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, your sleight of hand, you do not have the bonus d6 at this point. You still have the I... increased uh, difficulty because it is an awkward piece of gear. But it still is at advantage because Silas helped yep. me. That's true. Ooh. 26 is quite enough. Perfect. So this time, uh, describe how Annie epically closes this last problem, uh, moves this piston with this... Uh... There is a lot of, like... <laughs> <laughs> and then, that, that is the extent of it. It's like... I, I, I kind of... I, you can feel free to veto this, but I kind of imagine there's a lot of very close little things, and Silas kind of nudges your elbow and you just go wang and hits it properly. Yeah. Uh, gets kind into of. place once more, latch it, latches in, and yes, the final of these has now been moved into place. The final light goes on the console. Who um, knew? Boomerangs. Uh, Dudek sees the light go on. We'll just make it quicker by having him leap forward. And in fact, uh, something you notice, uh, Medric, is, as Dudek kind of leaps, he doesn't leap through you. In fact, he stands where he is, but uh, shadowy arms extend out from his, uh, kind of a pale, uh, almost uh, wispy form of his arms kind of comes out as he reaches with elongated uh, shadow form arms to flick the last switch. Huh. As soon as the switch is flicked, because uh, Valenti, the one thing she could do is hold her action. Um, draws forth all the power. The light blooms in this area. Uh, you can actually hear on the courtyard um, the hissing of that shadow assassin caught up in the overflow from here. Electricity and lightning dances around the room, threatening but not quite uh, uh, hitting any of you, but you can see that it kind of is less discriminant about the, the, uh, the remaining forms that are here. Within the tube, the light grows, and the thing you notice immediately is all those little pinpricks of, of reflected light that are on the uh, gems on the surface skin of Valenti uh, all light up, and then the entire thing seems to light up, leaving nothing but this constellation of pinpricks. It then shoots up and out of the tube. You see the tube maybe out of ancient... Uh, 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 time being here, maybe out of, out of laying for too long, reacting and cracking under the pressure of this released energy, which flows from the tube into the massive construct along each of those points, one by one, lighting up, dunk, 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 those uh, apparent, the internal version of the gem lining up with the external version of the gem. The armor st uh, straightens, stretches a little bit. You hear a little, little uh, sag from the metal fatigue potentially possibly that 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 assassin strike 
and then it turns torso only to face back at the assassin. Uh, the, the voice of Valenti now no longer coming from the speakers around the room, but inside this construct uh, simply says, Run. And we'll pick it up from there. You've pretty much solved this. The rest will be a resolution of a different kind. We're coming close to the end of the allotted time for today, so I wanted to kind of have a moment here uh, where we get a chance to chat. We will be returning back in two weeks. That seems to be the, the regular schedule. Hopefully we're back to it in, 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 uh, in uh, well order. Um, and the, the challenge slash question that I have for my players, not something you have to answer right now, but something I hope you have a chance over the next two weeks to answer, is what are your goals with your character? Now, these goals can be the things that the character wants to get done, or these can be the goals of what you would like to have as a challenge for your character. This gives me an idea of what to put in your, in your way next. Um, these should be in the short, medium, and long categories. Short is, I expect to see this in a session or two, or, or be able, rather, to complete it in a session or two. Uh, medium is, I expect this is going to take a few sessions, maybe even uh, be something which triggers the level to go up. Um, if each of you have a medium, for example, that you see is kind of a, a level up experience, then maybe I'll have all three of them uh, get experience or line up to have them done, and when they're done, we can trigger that level up. Longer term ones are ones you expect that would have significant differences. They could be for the campaign itself or one of the major plot lines that are out there that you want to tackle next. That gives me an idea of where to go. The only other thing I would ask along with doing these and try to come up with about two to four of those, probably at least one long and then the other ones potentially to support it or other things that would come up in the meantime. But the only other thing is I would say just if you guys get a chance to chat amongst yourselves about what the group goals similarly are. Those I only need one or two of them, but something that all of you agree is something you want to get in, ta in, in doing soon. And those ones are probably going to be short to medium, but certainly if you have a long-term goal that you want to define as the biggest next target for you to, to tackle, that helps me tremendously in planning. Because after this, there's a bit of openness as to what happens next both from my side and yours. So if I can satisfy more likely what you're hoping to have happen, that will work much better for me. I'm also going to give you the notice that uh, when we get through this bit, there will be some downtime. So there will be no particular actions in the world which prompt heroic epic action. It's a chance for your characters to regroup. Maybe they can work on some of those short or medium time, tw uh, medium, uh, time goals, or maybe it's a chance to make a bit of money. I'm going to be revisiting the downtime rules that I created and either getting a little bit of revision and, and review of them, or we will just use the Xanathar's Guys one for the next, but essentially mark it off in downtime weeks. Uh, and it will be uh, four weeks of downtime. So it's time to get some significant actions done if you so need to. Now, with that said, are there any questions about what I was just requesting of you guys? Certainly, if there are, you can ask me now or we can talk about it offline. Seeing no particular questions. I want to thank you guys for participating. It's great to get back to it. I know we're all a little bit rusty, but uh, you guys did well. It was a dangerous scenario with a yeah, bunch of timers was, uh, in there. scary. <laughs> <laughs> but you have Use succeeded. Of, a, of an item that has been in my purse for a while. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The, the epic boomerang use. Uh, I happen to just be joking like that I have this random magic boomerang that none of us use but I ended up with because I'm the only one who could maybe use it <laughs> now I expect the epic story of the boomerang to continue I want to thank my players for joining me today and thank you at home for watching if you're watching for live on twitch.tv slash encaf1 great we generally gather every other Sunday around 3 o'clock Atlantic time uh, I think it'll soon be Atlantic savings time I always forget what the change is but it's not too far from now uh, or you can watch the sessions afterwards, all of them that we have recorded and didn't accidentally go down the hole, which was a couple of them. All of them are on, uh, my YouTube page, youtube.com slash ENCIF1. You can also check out Watchers of the Drowned Isles on Facebook. It's a group where Pat, uh, diligently writes up the summary of what's happened in the previous session, which is something I use heavily to figure out if I can remember what happened as well. Uh, so thank you guys very much. And uh, 
Yeah, we never, I've never figured out how to end these things. Um, I think after a hundred of them, we've figured it you, out. You'd but. think so. Have fun. See you soon.